back for another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be looking at Lords of Verminion. And as always, hello from Mifri. So, this was added a while ago. I've avoided it until now. Not for any particular reason. I like minions. I've got a lot of minions. I've got 132 minions, in fact. So, in my quest to try and find any type of interest in this game, I'm just trying every feature which I've previously skipped. So let's talk to the Minion Master. So in order to get here, we have to go to the Gold Source. So you have to go up the elevator towards the Chocobo area, and then just take a right, and you're right here. So greetings and welcome to Minion Square. If you're if you're a Star Wars stable of mighty minions, then Lord of a Minion is a game for you. Feel free to test your technical talents at any of the tables available. Every gaming station has a rule book on hand, so newcomers can um, study up before they throw down. Should your forces feel feeble, our minion trader stands ready to provide you with fresh fodder for the field. And if the intensity of the tournament tickles your fancy, then the record keeper on my right will sign you up with a swiftness. Okay. So minion... <laughs> minions for Gil. Uh -huh. I've already got these ones. Minions for MGP. How do I, already, how do I know if I've already got one? Fairly sure I've already got these ones, so I probably would have bought them. I don't actually, I can't remember. Tournament record keeper. Lord of a minion, blah, blah, blah. Ask about upcoming tournament. So there are tournaments as well. So, well. Wow. Let's look at this. Battles. Wow. 29 victories out of 30 battles. What a nerd. Anyway. Let's, um... Let's just do it then, shall we? Let's kick one of the tables. Verminion Challenge, Play Guide, Lord of Verminion. So, Lord of Verminion is a gold saucer exclusive attraction in which you pit your personal minions against the minions of others in a game of skill and strategy. There are several different modes of play, from single player challenges to realm wide tournaments. The gameplay is done through a special interface centered on your minion hotbar. The minion hotbar can be edited by selecting Verminion located under the gold saucer option in your main menu. Minions not set to your minion hotbar can still be summoned during matches. When challenging other players in head-to-head -head matches, you will earn or lose rank points depending on the outcome of your match. Your current RP total can be viewed under the gold saucer option in your main menu. RP is used to determine your ranking in the realm as well as determine the opponents when entering general matches. There are some match types in which RP is not affected by match outcome. There are three types of matches available in Lord of Verminion. The Verminion Challenge, Player Battles and Tournaments. A series of theme battles designed to teach the game rules. Your opponent will be an NPC known as Minion Master. Okay. Matches played against other players depending on the battle RP, blah, blah, blah. Okay, tournaments consist of multiple matches against other players with victories earning you tournament points. At the end of a tournament, the players with the most points will be rewarded with prizes. Tournaments will often feature special rules and restrictions. Okay, so what do I... Okay, Verminion Challenge, Stage 1 Tutorial. So, Lord of Verminion, command your minions and conquer your enemies. Play a match for 0 MGP. Yes. So, you have registered a match. Please remain within the Chocobo Square until the match ends. Okay, join. I don't know how I could leave. Not unless someone teleports me out or something. Okay, so let's see what this teaches us. So, welcome to the tutorial of Lord of the Minion. In this one-on-one -on -one battle, each player feels an army of minions in an attempt to shatter their opponent's arcane stones. Victory is achieved when all of an opponent's arcane stones have been destroyed. Select your starting minions. The briefing period has begun. This is a short pre-battle phase within which you can prepare your initial forces. The minions you select during the briefing will be placed in your summoning queue and summoned to the field when the battle commences. First, let's try searching for a minion from your minion hotbar. Okay. Uh-huh. Let's just select that. So you have selectedly, successfully selected a minion. It will now be placed into your summoning queue. Cool. 
So each minion has a summoning cost, which ranges from 10 to 30 points. As long as the total cost does not exceed the capacity of your summoning gorge, you may summon the same unit multiple times or select any combination of minions you wish for those you have available. During the briefing period, your summoning gorge is capped at 60 points. You must be quick with your decision, however, as this preparation phase has a time limit of 20 seconds. Familiarize yourself with the costs and abilities of your minions before a match so that you can quickly select the ideal starting lineup. So your view of the field is controlled by the camera. Try using the movement keys to shift your viewpoint around. Okay. So the battle has begun. All the minions placed in your summoning queue during the briefing period will now appear on the field. You can now give orders to those summoned minions and commence your assault on the opponent's arcane stones. Uh, note that your summoning capacity has been expanded to 240 points. The gorge displaying your current summoning costs and maximum capacity can be found on the minion hotbar. Okay. So, summon minions will enter the field from your currently selected gate. The middle of the three gates, gate B, is selected by default. Left click on A, on the A found in the hotbar display, and try summoning a minion from gate A. Okay, so A, let's summon this one, I guess. So, by summoning units from the gate closest to your intended objective, you cut down your enemy's travel, t your minion travel time. So once a battle is underway, summoning minions in quick succession will incur a penalty in the form of a recast timer. The length of this recast timer is determined by the cost of the previously summoned unit. While the recast timer is in effect, subsequent attempts to summon will place the selected minions into the summoning queue. Try summoning several minions and see this feature for yourself. Okay. So a maximum of 10 minions can be placed onto the summoning queue. Keep an eye on your summoning gorge and the demands of the battlefield to make the best use of this feature. So for the next part of the tutorial, a wayward hatchling has volunteered its services to help demonstrate minion movement. To move a minion, you must first select the unit, then select the unit's intended destination. Left click on the minion to select it. With the minion selected, right click on the desired destination to send the unit to the lo that location. Okay. Like that. Cool. Done. You're a... Hang on. Now let's try selecting multiple minions and moving them as a group. Left click the cursor and drag and create a selection square. Upon releasing the left mouse button, all minions inside the square will be selected. Try selecting all wayward hatchlings on the field and then move them to the yellow circle. Okay, so like that, and boom. So, look out, your opponent minions have appeared on the field. To triumph in Lord of a Minion, you must engage and defeat the enemy units as the situation demands. Your minions will automatically initiate attacks against nearby enemy units and will continue fighting until the enemy moves out of auto-attack range. Select the way you're attaching once more and send them against your foes. Okay. Get a better view. Rip, world first. It seems that your opponent has taken advantage of the confusion to launch an assault upon your arcane stones. Should the Narcosistan be surrounded by nothing but enemy minions, the structure will begin taking damage and ultimately be destroyed. You will lose the battle once all of your arcane stones have been shattered, so be ready to deploy your minions in defense of these key positions. Move the wayward hatchlings to the center of the field and defeat the minions that threaten arcane stone B. Okay. I think one of my minions is actually going to die. Okay, done. Your opponent has unleashed a pair of baby behemoths. There are four types of minions. Three of these, monster, critter, and puppet, will fight 
at either an advantage or disadvantage depending on the nature of their opponent. Minion types of sorry type affinities are as follows: monsters are strong against critters. Critters are strong against puppets. Puppets are strong against monsters. Okay, so that's like the circle. I wonder if I should write that down. The final type gadgets are neither strong nor weak against any type. Remember these affinities may make the difference between jubilant victory and crushing defeat. Baby behemoths are monster type and thus are strong against your quartet of critter type hatchlings. To make matters worse, the behemoths execute area attacks as opposed to your hatchling single target attacks and are capable of inflicting damage against all nearby units simultaneously. You will have to take advantage of numbers, however, giving your minions a better chance to prevail against otherwise superior enemies, send your hatchling against the behemoths and dispatch the monsters in a valiant flurry of feathers. Okay, so where are these? Where are these, baby? Oh, there they are. I'm so dead. Like, some of my team are already, like, really low health anyway. That's one. Each minion is capable of executing a special action, which is, when used to good effect, can help turn the tide of battle. To execute a special action, you must first group together four minions of this exactly same variety in what is known as an action party. Each member of the action party must also have the maximum number of action points, a resource that accumulates over time. Select the individual minion in which you want to execute the action, and then click the Execute Action button in the minion hotbar. Try this now by selecting one of the wayward hatchlings and performing a special action on the baby behemoth. Okay, so let's select this one. And uh, what's this? Execute action. Cool. So we won, somehow. So your hatchling special ability has allowed them to triumph over the foe who would otherwise prove a near impossible challenge. So you will notice, however, that the Rigas of battle have taken their toll on the hatchling's HP. To restore the minion's HP, simply send the unit back to one of the gate areas. Select your way with hatchlings and return them to the gate to lick their wounds. Okay. To here. Oh, here. Sorry. Oh, maybe not. The area is glowing. This like square is glowing, but it's actually here. I'm supposed to send them. The hatchlings have arrived at your gate. Gate areas function as a form of sanctuary. While within these areas, your minions will recover HP and are safe from attacks from enemy units. Conversely, minions inside a gate area are also unable to launch attacks of their own. So you must weigh the temporary loss of offensive strength against the benefits of refreshing your wary troops. In addition to the sanctuary they provide, gates have yet another useful function, teleportation. Minions inside a gate area can be transported to another gate instantaneously. Select your way with hatchlings once more and then try sending them to another one of your gates. Okay. So let's put them here. There we go. Your minions are teleported to the selected gate. Using this function can allow you to quickly send minions from one side of the field to another and assault lightly defended enemy structures from the nearest gate. The time has come to lay waste to your opponent's arcana stones. Select the hatchling party and then move them to the arcana stone B in the center of the field. Okay, so what would be quicker then if I put them here? Damn it! Teleport. And then... go. I wish, like in every RTS game ever, putting the mouse at the edge of the screen will make it scroll that way rather than having to use my arrows. But they actually have begun attacking Arcana Stone B. Your minions will inflict damage on an opponent's Arcana Stone when no enemy units are present inside the red circle surrounding the structure. So the condition of each arcana stone is displayed by the crystal-like icons found at the top of the screen. As the crystal takes damage, 
the corresponding icon will gradually be chipped away. The total remaining HP of both your opponent and your opponent's arcane stones are also displayed at the top of the screen in the form of HP bars, allowing you to assess the progress of the battle at a glance. Continue your assault on arcane stone B. I don't. Are these like? I can't even see if they're actually attacking or not. Like it's taking damage, sure, but. So each variety of minion has an attribute with certain strengths, unrelated to their type affinity. These strengths allow a minion to be particularly effective against certain structures. For example, the Mammoth 001 is particularly strong against arcane stones, allowing it to inflict greater damage to those structures. Watch how much more quickly the HP of the arcane stone is completed when the Mammoths join the fray. So the shield provides additional defense to arcane stones. Destroy the structure and your opponent's crystals will become even easier to shatter. So this is where the innate strengths of cherry bomb come into play. Try directing this group to the cherry bombs against your opponent's shield. The opponent's shield can be attacked by positioning your minions in the red square in front of the structure. Okay. Right. So right here. Done. The enemy's shield penetrated. So your opponent's shield has been destroyed and enemy arcane stones will now fall uh, far more quickly to your attacks. Be sure to take swift advantage of the deactivated shield. All structures except the Arcana Stones will regenerate after sufficient time has passed, enabling them to once more apply their effects to the battle. Should you allow the enemy shield to reactivate, for example, it will restore its defensive properties to your opponent's Arcana Stones, uh, decreasing the amount of damage your minions can inflict to the crystals. Continue your attacks on the Arcana Stone B and then shatter the crystal completely. I mean, it's destroyed it like three times. There we go. Enemy Arcana Stone has been shattered. Arcana Stone B has been shattered. This is an example of how different strategies can aid you more effectively to destroy an Arcana Stone. Shower all of your opponent's Arcana Stones and victory will be yours. In addition to shields, there are other special structures that you will encounter on the field. For example, sorry, for more detailed information, check the relevant active help windows or read the play guide provided at the Lord of the Minion tables. So this tutorial is now concluded. Learn well your minion strengths and weaknesses and conquer all before you. Okay. You win. Yay. World first. So I got 150 MGP apparently. Okay, so let's read this. So in addition to arcade stones, there are several other types of structures, shields, protect, whatever. Search eyes reveal the locations of all enemy minions on the playing field. Damaging an opponent's search eye prevents them from seeing your minions until they are within proximity of their minions. Gates serve as minion summoning points as well as teleportation devices. HP is restored. Minions also cannot be harmed while within the boundaries and damage or destroy structures will automatically repair themselves over time okay so let's quit so yeah that is lord of the minion the minion categorized of two unique types wants to create a puppet and gadget the first three exhibit strengths and weaknesses against others the only gadgets are with only gadgets being neither strong nor weak against any this relationship lord of minion is called dominance monsters are effective against critters crit while ineffective against puppets crickets are critters are effective against puppets while ineffective against monsters puppets are effective against monsters ineffective against critters gadgets are not affected by dominance some minions may also have strengths against the playing field objectives known as structures a minion's strength can be viewed by selecting the minion in your minion hotbar list Okay, so that's um, Lord of the Minion. 
Um, I think it's something that I'm going to have to practice like off video for now. I'm going to have to practice it a lot probably. And once I've learned how to do it, not to do it and so on, then I will probably just make more videos of what I've learned. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. And as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri.